Hey, brothers and sisters, I started my video again because I didn't have a good light here. What I was trying to do. Anyway, I was just, let me start again. Um, I hate when I have to redo a video because I can't remember what I said. I can't remember if I said it. Did I say that in the last video and it's not included? Or is it in this one? I'm in the middle of the video. I remember, you know, I'll think, oh, I said that. But it was in the video that I that I didn't load. Um, anyway, I was mentioning about I've been delayed in making a video because I had to deal with some rebellious people, uh, relatives of mine. And, um, you know, like I was saying, it's that... Um, we all have those relatives, you know, especially like someone like me. I'm a pastor. Or you guys, if you're mature Christians, you give people godly advice and they ask you for their advice. You give them godly advice and then they do the opposite. They're in rebellion. And, you know, just like what you'd expect from a teenager. And so like I wrote about in the book, I mean, Satan was cast down for what? For rebellion. He rebelled against God. He began to think that he was like the Most High God, that he would ascend. You know, he said, I will. You know, there's the the I wills of Satan. There's two different passages in the Old Testament. I believe it's Ezekiel 28 and Isaiah 14 where it talks about, you know, all about Lucifer. And uh, anyway, he said, I will ascend on high. I will be like the Most High God. You know, I will, I will, I will. So through his pride, he fell. And pride is the root of, of all sin. You know, if pride goes before a fall, a haughty spirit before destruction. And so... What I, like what I wrote about in the, in the book, um, the whole theme of the end times is about the culmination of rebellion uh, of Satan and mankind. As an example, rock and roll music. What is the theme of rock? Why did rock become started and how did it become famous? It was out of a spirit of rebellion. You know, you've got, um, you know, the James Dean idea. You've got, uh, you know, rebel that a cause. And, of course, his end was destruction. Um, of course, he was, you know, someone pulled out in front of him. Uh, but that theme, you know, of being rebellious and then rock music and all that, Elvis was controversial. Why did teenagers love Elvis? Not just because of the sexualization of his dancing. Uh, like, I, you know, my thesis, my whole thesis of the book that I wrote, um, and that's, you know, where the Lord is leading me to build on that, uh, is Satan's plan for the ages. Satan's plan, final boarding call, Satan's plan for the ages in our last mission. So that's the theme of my messages always, of the ministry. So the message is, of course, revival. And there's lots of people that uh, get involved with my YouTube channel because of the orphans and all that. And that, and the orphans and all that is a fruit, a fruit of our relationship with the Lord. As it says in James, that perfect religion is to keep yourself unspotted from the world and help widows and orphans. You know, that's the from James, the book of James. So the whole theme of the videos that the Lord always gives me, it's about this thing, final boarding call, you know, the Lord's return is soon, you know, get ready, repent, get right, the kingdom of heaven is at hand, Satan's plan for the ages, here is the rise of the new world order, and it's almost here, and the capstone of the new world order is the Antichrist, Satan's greatest work. And deceiving mankind is the Antichrist. That's a culmination of all of his effort is the Antichrist, which, of course, we know at the end of the story, the Lord Jesus Christ returns at the end of the tribulation and destroys the works of Satan and destroys those who are trying to destroy the earth. And he rules and reigns on earth a thousand years and all those things that happen at the end. Uh, but we're not there yet. We are still in the church age and the age of grace. So, as I said, rock and roll is a great example. The theme and why these teenagers loved Elvis, one reason, was because he was re it, it was a spirit of rebellion against their parents, the values of their parents, to go against the value of your parents. This is typical of teenagers. But this concept has exploded in these end times, as it t tells us in Daniel chapter 12, verse 4, that in the end times, knowledge will you know, rapidly increase and people will travel to and fro all over the place. So, of course, we have mass transit, we have airplanes, we have all those things, and technology has exploded. Do you realize that 100 years ago people still rode a horse? Uh, do you realize that if, the, if Julius Caesar came forward, say Julius Caesar who lived in 100 or 150 B.C., he was you know military leader of, of the Roman army there as he crossed the Rubicon and all that stuff. If he came forward to the time of George Washington, brothers and sisters, and they said, okay, you're going to be a general here with George Washington. You're talking about 2,000 years difference, but yet Julius Caesar would not really be lost 
in the military of George Washington. The changes are very minor. You had the the uh, rifle, which they had took you know like a thirty seconds to load. Uh, these uh, the old uh, you know uh, bore load musket that they had, but and the cannon and all that with the gunpowder and all that. But the changes were minor, minor in the military strategy and all that kind of stuff. Technology, you're still using horses, all of that. Now, if you were to take George Washington ahead to the modern day military, you're only talking 200 years, 250 years, he would be totally lost. I mean, he wouldn't know what to do. Look at computer, just this in the last 25 years, computers and all that stuff. As a matter of fact, uh, even as we talked about in the book, even Civil War generals, the time from Julius Caesar to the Civil War is not that big of a deal. It's a little bit more change. Take a Civil War general like uh, Robert E. Lee or Ulysses S. Grant, bring them forward to the year 2014. They would be totally lost. Drones, the computer, cell phones, all this kind of stuff, all the many things that they have. You know, that is what people don't realize is one of the end time signs is this massive explosion of technology. People are just living it day by day. They don't realize, they forget. You know, especially, uh, well, even uh, if you are 40 years old or older, you know that when you were a kid, there's no uh, cell phones. There's no uh, Internet. You know, people don't have a personal computer and all this kind of stuff. You know, so all of that technology, which was, ooh, a novelty 20 years ago when you had to do the dial-up Internet and all that. Now, it's not only is this technology out here, but people are living you know, like this YouTube and all that. People have friends from around the world through the Internet. There's people that's met their uh, wives and husbands on eHarmony.com and all this, whatever. Everything is totally changed, uprooted. You know, finances like with credit cards and now, you know, it's going to that mark of the beast, that technology. The, uh, you know, tracking people with GPS and all that. I remember when I was in the uh, Persian Gulf War in Iraq, GPS was brand new. I'm talking about the first Gulf War. GPS was brand new and it was still like a secret thing. It was a military secret. And uh, at that time, I never heard of it before. And when I got there, each uh, at that time it was new and only each company commander had a GPS. Maybe also the first sergeant of each company, they call it, or higher. Only the top leadership at each level had these GPS track, you know, trackers. They were very slow. And uh, they had satellite phones too, which were new. These satellite phones and GPSs and all that stuff is all brand new technology at that time that it was been introduced into the military just in time for that. The stealth fighter was also new at that time, too, and a secret thing. Anyway, so, brothers and sisters, the technology explosion is part of the end times, and it's well beyond what we understand. But uh, what I wanted to talk about, two things. Number one, I'm going to make a video. I have laid hands on and prayed with... Uh, hundreds of people, maybe th or thousands, and I've and, and uh, hundreds of people or thousands of people I've given words to while I was laying hands on them and praying with them. And then there's dozens who people, or maybe even hundreds by now, who've messaged me on YouTube, and, then, and, and, and I've given them a word in writing. When they emailed me, I responded, and if the Spirit of the Lord was on me to give a word, I did. Sometimes it flows easier than other times. Of course, it's up to the Lord. But the Lord is leading me to go to a kind of a different level. And uh, what I did is, is I'd ask people the other day uh, to message me if they wanted a word. Now, I'm going to try to do this in the next video, by the grace of God. I just wrote down the first names of 20 people. There's more than that. If I don't name you, then message me again. Uh, because I have people from Facebook, YouTube, you know, all these. <laughs> and i got all these different things now. Uh, email. I've got 20 names here I wrote down. And I'm going to try to go through these in a video and give a word for each person. So it'll be totally new. I'll see the person. Just have their first name written down and try to give a word to them. Some people just didn't even give me their name. Someone that didn't give me their name, I can't, I'm not going to do it. I can't remember. Just like your handle from YouTube. Um, if you give me your name included, you don't have to really give any other information. Just your name, basically. Uh, but anyway, I wanted to look at something here in this video. As I'm talking about, I'm trying to get some light shined on there. I guess this thing don't give out any light. Um, I tried to shine light on there with that cell phone. See this thing here? I'm sorry, brothers and sisters. I was trying to show you this thing. Oh, it's what a pain. See this right here? That Florida Lee. That's a Florida Lee. The Florida Lee, or Florida Lease, you can look it up. I tried to shine some light on here, but it's not really working now, is it? Um, it's 
not really unless someone uh, let me borrow this phone that's an old phone <laughs> but it works to call um, this right here is a Florida Lee that um, I wanted to talk about I'm just kind of a little bit annoyed because I can't really see it good um, there'll be people complaining about it just sad all the hunger in the world all the people lost and going to hell all the problems in, in, in this earth people with no food to eat tonight people that's never heard the gospel and people are worried about nitpicky things like that but what can you do brothers and sisters let's just pray for them that uh, they don't have to find out the hard way what it's like to have a hard life um, anyway I'm trying to get the light on there see that Florida Lee you can see a little bit better now that's a side view of it of Florida Lee and uh, anyway what I wanted to show you guys about it is something new that the Lord had shown me look at this thing at the bottom I've never noticed it before there's the regular Florida Lee on top and then there's a little Florida Lee on the bottom can you see that never noticed it before until the Lord pointed it out to me so I've made let's see now that's a better view oh yeah there you go got it now finally I have to play around um, I can do an elaborate slideshow and have all this presentation with no depth to it there's some people that are popular on YouTube before because uh, they're great slideshows you know the cat lover type people for me I'm not a cat lover I'm more along the lines of, of someone who likes dogs so uh, you know that kind of people are you know maybe it's you know you have this very overly organized people and then people that are not so organized are more you know your uh, dog type people I guess that's what I'm trying to say people that like dogs instead of cats anyway so here's the regular Florida Lee and then it's got this bottom part another underneath Florida Lee so that's what I want to talk about number one let me give this disclaimer the Florida Lee goes all the way back to Mesopotamia there's uh, someone has sent me a link of Native American stuff Indian stuff and all this way back and their gods had hats with Florida Lee on it with these Florida Lee's on top of them so this symbol is it, um, all over the world it's ancient it goes all the way back to the beginning of, of mankind on earth all the way back to the plain of Shinar where uh, mankind really got his start after the flood uh, so this is not a symbol that's just exclusive to France it's just people today thinks it's exclusive to France okay now uh, it's been said that this is a white it represents the white lily and then this is the symbol also supposed to be the Trinity some people say the Father Son and the Holy Spirit um, and and the theme that I'm going with as I said I restarted this video I can't remember what I said in this video what's I said in the last video but the thing about it is brothers and sisters is the theme that the Lord gave me that I'm running with is leading to who is the Antichrist and yes I will say this again if I, if I didn't say it on this new video I'm making a disclaimer yes we're all looking for the Lord Jesus Christ but it's not about us it's not about you if you're already Christian these videos that the Lord would give me to make and other people to make is for everyone for the lost for the backslidden and for those who are saved so there are lots of people who get saved when they hear about the Antichrist but not when they hear about Jesus they already heard the gospel and didn't want to hear it but then when they hear about the New World Order and they see it happening then they come back and revisit their decision about Jesus okay it's sad brothers and sisters as I said there's people millions of people on this earth with nothing to eat and basically nearly starving to death there's you know hundreds of thousands of people as an example in the Philippines who lost everything and you know their all their family was killed in that typhoon the, the strongest typhoon ever recorded on earth that hit there just north of where I live at in the Philippines about 100 miles north 200 miles north all these kind of things going on in the world people got real problems you know I was talking to somebody about this the other day I get messages every day of people with real problems people dying of cancer people that their husband is on drugs and ran off you know people whose relatives somebody killed themselves all kind of, I get messages every day asking for my advice my counsel as a pastor my prayer and then there's people tons of people on YouTube who are nitpicky like as I mentioned that they can't see this good you know uh, one time I made a video from Las Vegas because my wife and son were there and they were we were in a hotel room because I didn't you know people didn't donate enough for me to stay in any place nicer I had to stay in a raggedy hotel uh, the lowest cheapest hotel they've got there um, 
that's a dive, um, and these same people uh, were complaining that, oh, can you get your kid to be quiet because we can't hear you good? Can't you get, you know, some comment like that? Can you imagine, especially after the fact that my stepson Joshua died, you know, and the ministry for the orphanage came out of that because uh, Joshua died, and then our son, our only son that we have left, is playing in the bathtub so that, you know, and sacrificing, you know, I'm making my family sacrifice for one thing by traveling all over the place and staying in some raggedy hotel in the evilest pla- one of the evilest places on earth in Las Vegas and then staying in the bathtub so I can pray and study and make a video for a, you know, give of myself as the Lord would lead me to the world, to the not just to the body of Christ, but to the lost and the backslidden. And someone would complain about my son being too loud in the bathtub. Now, can you imagine the selfish, self-centered, uh, delusional people that think they're Christians? Unbelievable, brothers and sisters. I deal with people like that every day, too. And it's unbelievable. And then people will mess. if I mention it, someone will message me the old cliche, oh, just ignore them. Look, those people, it's not about ignoring people. You know, and I'm not going to keep... You know, there's people that they 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 quit YouTube every other day. No, I've I've never done that by the grace of God and all that. I'm saying, can you believe people who call themselves Christians are so hard-hearted, cold-hearted, vicious people and think they're going to heaven and think they're Christians? What wicked people. What wicked people. Anyway, brothers and sisters, the Florida Lee, as above, so below. As above, so below. All the stuff that the Lord's been giving me for the last four years, really, it's all connected. That's why people, you know, people, lots of people can't see um, what what I'm trying to say is, is there's a unified theory for everything. Of course, it's, you know, you've got God, right? You're the Lord Jesus Christ and all that. And you've got the end times coming. It's all, uh, you have to look at everything in the big picture. It's all you know, in other words, it's uh, this is a unifying theory. You've got to connect all these streams. You know, that's what the Lord gave me, you know, the wisdom to write that book. Uh, and by the grace of God, uh, the Lord would give me a book to finish the whole thing of what the Lord is trying to show me. All of these streams interconnect. Like I said, rock and roll. You can look at rock and roll and say, look at the, uh, you know, and, and there, you know, I'm not saying that there's not music. It's not good music or whatever, but the intent of the enemy for rock and roll. As I say, as above, so below. Music came from heaven. Let's look at rock and roll music again. Music. The angels sing in heaven. The people that's died sing in heaven. When we go to heaven, we'll be singing, worshiping God. God created music. Lucifer was the worship leader in heaven before he fell. So God made music and made it pure. Everything God made, he saw it and said it was good. Satan perverted it. And then you got Marilyn Manson, devil worship of music. As above, so below. It's just one as above, so below. There's also uh, Christians try to copy, let thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So Christians try to do below on earth what the Lord is doing above. Jesus said, I can only do what I I see my Father doing. Now Satan, as Jesus told those people there in, in the Gospel of John, he told those Pharisees, you are of your father, the devil. Because what you see him do, you're doing. He's the father of lies. He's a liar from the beginning and the father thereof. So they're only doing what their father is doing. So as above, so below. You're talking about the second heaven of where Satan is and, and those powers and principalities and forces of darkness in high places. What evil people are doing is only what's below. And Christians, if we're following the Lord, we're doing on earth what we see our Father doing and what we read in the Word and what the Holy Spirit is leading us to do. So third heaven, we're doing, and those evil people are doing what's in the second heaven. So there's as above, so below, Satan trying to copy God, and then there's as above, so below, you know, God, third heaven, God, and us below, Christians, and then second heaven, the devil, and all of his fallen angels and all that, leading the evil people on earth, the Illuminati, the, you know, the man, all of this, these evil, wicked people and uh, who are rulers of countries and all that stuff, they're all being led and, and following their above, which is the second heaven. So all the things that's being done by both sides is really imitating either the second heaven for evil people and the third heaven for Christians, okay? But, so let's just talk about, as I mentioned, rock and roll. Rock and roll is a perversion of what's been done in, in heaven. 
sex. God created sex between a man and a woman. A married man and a woman. And the, it says marriage is honorable among all and the marriage bed undefiled. So God created sex as a gift and a blessing for procreation and to increase the love of a man and a woman, as I've mentioned before. Your love increases, your, you know, the, uh, your bonding, your commitment to each other is bound up in, in the gift of sex that God gave to husband and wife. Now, of course, Satan, what has he done? Homosexuality, fornication, bestiality, all this stuff down here below. Down here below. A mockery of what God created. He wants to mock what God created. That's why when we see gay marriage, it is, it is, if you read Romans chapter 1, and then like about Sodom and Gomorrah, we see that the culmination of bringing God's judgment is this rampant acceptance and the standard homosexuality becoming the majority, becoming the normal, becoming accepted, not seen as an abomination, is one of the last steps, like in Romans chapter 1, the last step of apostasy and uh, reprobate mind. The last step of becoming reprobate and unable to get saved. Someone who has a reprobate mind cannot get saved. Their heart has been seared with a hot iron. Their heart is scarred, blocked. God has turned them over. They cannot get saved if they wanted to. A reprobate mind. The final step in that is the homosexuality, sodomy. Anyway, that's why it's such a big deal. Because God's pattern says it's a big deal. Okay, so right here, that's below. I see I did what she talked about. Uh, as a matter of fact, look at the marriage. The man is supposed to be the head. As a matter of fact, you know, there's so many different... I could, look at, I could do hours of video on this. Look at this. Let's look at the first... I, I was going to... I'm talking about marriage, but let me go with that. Here's the husband and wife, God in the middle. A, a godly marriage. Husband, wife, God in the middle of their marriage. In their family. There's three. A three-court is not easily broken, the Bible says. Okay. Here's the perversion of that homosexual marriage. Satan in the middle. The little nub stub at the bottom. It's a you know, a mockery trying to stand in the place of God. Here's Satan. Here's the the two men or two women, whatever, and homosexual. Or even people, a man and woman just living together and not married. But of course, it's pro progressive to homosexuality and all this. Uh bestiality, whatever, it becomes more of an abomination at all these different levels. Okay. How about this? The DNA of a man becomes a Christian. The DNA of God, the Spirit of God enters into the DNA of man. You become a new creature. Old things are passed away. All things become new. You become a new creature in Christ. Literally, your DNA is changed. Your, your, the Spirit of the Lord is indwelt you. You become part of the temple. You become a temple of God and part of the temple, which is the body of Christ. The Bible tells us stop looking for churches, calling churches a temple. Stop looking for a temple in Jerusalem. But the Bible says we, Peter said, that we are living stones in the temple of God. So each Christian is a stone, a living stone in the temple of God, the body of Christ, and which is his temple. And then each individual Christian is also a temple of the Holy Spirit. Here we are. Perversion of that, right down here. The mark of the beast. The mark of the beast. People take the mark of the beast. Satan enters their heart. Like the Satan entered the heart of Judas. The mark of the beast. Right there it is. And individuals become demon-possessed right there. Here they are. Their DNA, then they become possessed by a demon. When the people take the mark, right there, it's a perversion. I could go on and on and on. This is the duality stuff I've been talking about. Same thing the Lord keeps giving me over and over again. But the new thing that I'm adding is, I never noticed that on the, every floor to lease, you will see that the bottom, there's below. As above, so below. There's tons of more things I want to talk about it, brothers and sisters. But... Seems like I'm always hindered until midnight to start making a video. Um, God bless you guys. And I want you to know that if God be for you, who can be against you? That Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. He came and died for you and me. He's our Lord and our God. He's our Savior. He's our blessed hope. He is our Redeemer. He's the Christ. He's the Messiah. He's the Savior. He's the Healer. He's the Redeemer. He's already done all of these things for us. When Jesus died on the cross, he said, it is finished. He finished all the work that we need to do. You know, I've made, lately the Lord has had me make many videos about holiness, walking in sanctification. There's tons of Bible verses that. It talks about how we are called to walk in, in sanctification. I, I need to do a video on that. 
But on the other hand, brothers and sisters, I made tons of videos talking about the grace of God. So they are both true. We have the grace of God. We're saved by faith. By grace are you saved through faith, not of your own, but it's a gift of God, not by works. At least any man should boast. That's Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. That is true. But at the same time, it, Paul goes on to say that we're saved unto do good works. We're saved for the purpose. As the Lord has foreknew us, He predestined us to be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. So we're to be sanctified. And, and there's a text that the Lord gave me the other day. I've got I to gotta go uh, look it up again um, and uh, make a video about that. But we are called to holiness, to sanctification after we're born again. And if you're truly born again, you will walk with the Lord. Now the rapture. Lots of people ask me about that and always mention it. Yes, I believe the Bible clearly teaches a pre-tribulation rapture. I don't debate with anybody about it. If you don't want to believe in the rapture, that's your business. No one is a false prophet because they do believe in the rapture or don't believe in the rapture. And no, it was not created in the 1800s. As a matter of fact, probably the oldest writing about it is by Irenaeus in his book number four called Against Heresies. Irenaeus was the disciple of Polycarp, who was the disciple of John, who wrote the book of Revelation. So in other words, when the apostle John was an old man, he had a young guy who was his assistant, and his name was Polycarp. He was burned at the stake when he was like 86 years old. He's in Fox's Book of Martyrs. Now, Polycarp, he had a disciple when he was an old man, and his name was Irenaeus. And Irenaeus wrote that Polycarp told him, and Polycarp heard from the one who wrote Revelation, saying that there would be a pre-tribulation removal of the true church. Okay, you can't get hardly any much further back than that as a commentary on what John really saw, what John meant, and what was going to happen. So all these false rumors about someone in 1800, people just copy and paste what they see on the Internet. It is total foolishness. There's tons of other examples. There's uh, someone in the 700s who was preaching. There's lots of them. There's tons of them. That's just two that I mentioned. Uh, the name of the other guy, I can't remember, but uh, there's uh, Grant Jeffries, Dr. Grant Jeffries, who just recently died. All you got to do is Google. And you'll uh, see, uh, like, Dr. Grant Jeffries, who wrote lots of good books. Um, the earliest teachings about the rapture. There's one from the 700s of a guy, can't think of his name, who did a sermon and wrote it. Uh, the teaching of a pre-tribulation rapture. So, uh, and besides the teaching of these people, ultimately, we have to go to the Word of God. And the Word of God tells us clearly that we are not... Uh, subject under wrath. We are not uh, to experience the wrath of God, but to obtain salvation through Jesus Christ. First Thessalonians chapter 5. I've got a bunch of teaching to do out of that text that the Lord has been giving me to, brothers and sisters. I'm way behind in my teachings. Uh, God bless you guys. Let me get this put out, and then I'm going to pray about that one of those uh, words for each person on the list. God bless.